بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وآله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل به فليس لله حاجة أن يدع طعامه وشرابه وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام تكف شرك عن الناس تكون عليك صدقة أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected brothers and elders We are very quickly moving through the month of Ramadan And there's only a few nights left We've entered the last عشرة The last 10 nights the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, which is the height of this blessed month, mashallah. Many of the brothers are observing itikaf, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the itikaf of all of those that are making the itikaf, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us and them whatever duas that they are making, inshallah. The month of Ramadan is indeed a blessed month, right? And it's a, it's a unique experience. And part of that is, is that it passes so quickly and swiftly that you don't realize, and you're only left thinking afterwards, that what is it that I could have done more? But Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it came to the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, he would exert himself. There's the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, that إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشَرَ الْأَوَاخِرْ أَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ وَجَدَّ وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرْ That Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it came to the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, Nabi alayhi salam would stay awake at night. So that's something that we can do inshallah. Or if we cannot stay awake the whole night, then at least before going to sleep, we make ibadat, spend some time in ibadat. Uh, you know, if Tarawih is finishing early now, 11 o'clock, and uh, after that maybe spend another hour reading Quran, making tilawat, doing a'mal, because, you know, if you can't wake up in the morning, then at least there's some portion of the night that you're spending in ibadat of Allah Ta'ala. Qiyam in Tarawih is also ibadat. I mean, there's no doubt. But anything beyond that, inshallah, that's even better. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should stay awake at night, ayqada. And Nabi Ali Salam would stay awake, he'd keep the family awake also. And he would exert himself. He would exert himself during the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. The majority of the time Nabi Ali Salam was in itikaf. And why are we doing this? We're doing this so that we can earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Every moment of the month of Ramadan is special. And Ramadan is about what? What is what if you want to sum up, if somebody tells you what is Ramadan about, right? If somebody asks you a question, what is Ramadan about? then what comes to your mind, right? You'll say Ramadan is about fasting. Right? And it's a highlight, there's no doubt. That fasting is the most important component of the month of Ramadan. But why do we observe fasting? Why is it that we are fasting? What is it that we want? What is it what we want to get or achieve by virtue of fasting and qiyam and dua and taraweeh and all the good things, sadaqah and charity and all the good things that our people are doing, mashallah. What is it that we are trying to achieve? In one word, what is it? Allah Ta'ala tells us, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may obtain taqwa. Right? So we are aiming and achi- trying to achieve taqwa. Now taqwa, it consists of two things. One aspect of taqwa is doing good deeds. So doing a act of charity, doing a good deed, ibadat, fasting, you know, doing all the good deeds. That is an aspect of taqwa. And in order for the good deed to be accepted, a person's intention has to be right. So that's the, the basic thing. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ niyat. A person's intention needs to be right. So for any good deed to be accepted by Allah Ta'ala, the intention has to be right, number one. And the second most important thing is, is that we want to make sure that that deed that we are doing is done according to the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Because for any deed to be more accepted in the sight of Allah Ta'ala, if that is done according to the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're following the sunnah, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that good deed. So those are the two basic things for a good deed to be accepted. That's one aspect of taqwa, right? To do good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in the Qur'an. لَيَّنَالُ اللَّهُ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when you sacrifice an animal, although that is regarding sacrifice of an animal, but the idea is the same. That Allah ta'ala says that when you sacrifice an animal, then the blood and the meat of that animal doesn't reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You cannot take that meat or the blood of that animal and offer that to Allah Ta'ala. It's not the way it works. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala you know, is not in need of that necessarily. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكِ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ That it is the action that you are doing and the sincerity of the action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you, right? So that is what Allah ta'ala is looking at. The sincerity of the action that a person is doing. That is what counts. So you can do any good deed, any good deed from the, from the smallest to, to the biggest of good deeds. But if the intention is not right, that won't be accepted by Allah ta'ala. And you can do the smallest of good deeds. But if the intention is right and it's according to the sunnah, that will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one aspect of taqwa. But the second aspect of taqwa, which is equally as important, and especially we get an understanding about that in the month of Ramadan. See, because taqwa we say is what? We say it's to fear Allah ta'ala, which is correct. We say taqwa is to create a conscience of Allah ta'ala. That's also correct. Taqwa, we say that taqwa is to do good deeds. That's also correct. But one of the important aspects of taqwa is that a person leaves and avoids the things that Allah Ta'ala doesn't want the person to do. And so this becomes very clear in the month of Ramadan because by fasting, what are we doing? Are we doing something or are we actually leaving something? That is the key point. And instead of doing something, we're actually leaving something. And it's obviously with an intention. You're actually with an intention. You're leaving food and drink and a person is leaving his desires. When a person does that, a person is actually fasting. So what we understand is what fasting and Ramadan highlights for us is, is that as much as doing good deeds is important and it's emphasized, equally there's things that when we leave it, that is also beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what Ramadan teaches us. And so what we need to understand, and, and, and this is the, 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 the biggest, probably one of the biggest messages which, which I understand about Ramadan when Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah says that fasting is compulsory so that you may obtain taqwa. Because Allah Ta'ala is telling us that you fasted for 29 days, you fasted for 30 days, you stayed away from food and drink, which you are allowed to eat. Your kitchens are full, your fridges are full, there's food at home. But you're not eating, you're avoiding it. Why are you doing that? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So avoiding an action can also please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes not doing something that amounts to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is sometimes the aspect that is overlooked, right? We overemphasize. And again, I'm not trying to trivialize. I'm not, I'm not trying to say it's a small thing, but we overemphasize the doing, but we forget the aspect of abstaining and not doing. And this is amazing because Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there's a very interesting hadith where Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many different questions. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, said all the different forms of sadaqah and charity. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he highlighted the different aspects of charity. Where Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam said that when you do a good deed, that is an act of charity. When you help somebody, that is an act of charity. Removing an obstacle from the path that you are walking on, that is an aspect of charity. There's all these different forms of sadaqah and charity. When we come to the month of Ramadan, we understand that, oh, the importance of charity, right? MashaAllah. Every ad, every campaign that you go across that are being passed across social media is telling you to give and give and give. And alhamdulillah, mashallah, that's good. You give according to your capacity. Wherever you're comfortable, you want to give sadaqah and charity, do that. Don't hold back, inshallah. But when we speak about sadaqah and charity, monetary charity is not the only aspect of charity that we need to understand. We need to also understand that doing good deeds is an act of sadaqah and charity. So Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu finally, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listed many different things that amount to sadaqah and charity. And Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that, Ya Rasulullah, if I cannot do any of these things, if I cannot do any of these things, is there still room for me to earn the reward of charity? And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Takufu sharraka anin nas. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that protect people from your evil. Protect people from your evil. Meaning that you not harming people consciously, that is an act of sadaqah and charity also. Subhanallah. Right? Isn't that amazing? Right? Not doing something. And this is the point that I'm trying to get across. That consciously avoiding something and not doing something, a person will get the reward of sadaqah and charity. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an amazing hadith. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that, Raitu rajulan fil jannah. He says that I saw a person in jannah. And Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, the action that Nabi alayhi salam mentions that led this person to Jannah, that granted him entry into Jannah, wasn't so magnificent. Like if you, you know, you might think that, okay. And Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam said 
that what is it that led this person to Jannah? What is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved about the action of this person? It was the fact that there was a harmful object that was on the road. He moved it to one side and he thought to himself that so it doesn't hurt or harm me or anybody else. Allah Ta'ala loved that action and granted Jannah to this person. Allah Ta'ala granted Jannah to this person. So imagine, subhanAllah, sometimes the smallest of things, consciously doing that with the intention that I want to not harm other people and protect myself also from the harm of other people and protect others from my harm, that also becomes an act of sadaqah and charity. And that is what Ramadan is about. As much as Ramadan is about doing, Ramadan is also about abstaining. Right? That is important in a month of Ramadan. And that's why Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the hadith which I mentioned where the Prophet alayhi wa sallam said, That if a person is fasting, but a person doesn't lie, stop lying, right? he doesn't stop lying, he doesn't stop cheating, uh, a person continues to do all the evil things that a person is doing on a normal day, not that, you, not, not that we're supposed to, but... You know, unfortunately, a person carries on doing all the evil things that he does during the course of the year. He does that in the month of Ramadan also. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need the hunger of that person and the thirst of that person. The hunger and the thirst of that person doesn't benefit Allah ta'ala. And again, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Our staying hungry and not eating and drinking, it doesn't benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to understand that also. That our acts of ibadat, we are the ones that directly benefit from that. Either we benefit from that in this dunya, or either we will benefit from that in akhirat and in jannah, inshallah. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards a person, and you see the effects of that reward in this dunya also. Allah ta'ala does that sometimes. But the majority of the time, the reward of that is stored, and a person will receive that in the akhirat, right? So acts of ibadat, they only, you know, they benefit us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person is fasting, mashallah, you're observing the fast of the month of Ramadan, you know, it's a, it's a long day and, and it takes some effort and some conscience for a person to do that. But then again, a person is not conscious about what he's saying. A person is not conscious about what he's doing, right? Then Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that, that, that what is the point of not eating and drinking in the month of Ramadan but carrying out all these other actions that a person is not supposed to be doing? So that is the importance of the month of Ramadan. And that is the highlight of the month of Ramadan, right? That Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so that you may obtain taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And taqwa is, is as much as taqwa is to do the good and to do righteous and good deeds, taqwa is also equally to abstain, right? To stay away, to protect oneself from actions that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including protecting a person and protecting yourself from harming other people. We make dua to Allah Ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the understanding and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to derive the maximum from this month of Ramadan insha'Allah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the fasting and the qiyam and all the wonderful and the good deeds that are happening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of that and may Allah ta'ala grant us freedom from the fire of Jahannam. There's also the hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that in how many numbers Allah knows best, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants people freedom and emancipation from the fire of Jahannam. وَذَلِكَ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةٍ And that happens every night, the month of Ramadan. But it's obviously increased during the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And that's why we want to spend some portion of the night making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincerely making dua, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the difficulties that the ummah is going through. Right? Just across the world, just, you know, you, you just think to yourself, where is it that problems are not happening? Across the Muslim world, across the globe. Making dua for our brothers and sisters that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist them in difficult times. And then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them because if it's a Ramadan for us, it's also Ramadan for them. Right? It's Ramadan for, you know, it's Ramadan for them also. We're fasting, they're also fasting. We want to carry out ibadah, they also want, they also want to carry out the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one aspect, one last thing that we want to mention, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was always conscious about the fact that ease and comfort is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should never take it for granted and we should always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't convert this ease and comfort into difficulty. That is one thing that we always must be conscious about. And part of that is making dua for our brothers and sisters that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them, remove the difficulty and the pain and the suffering of the ummah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower them and us and the whole of the ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his blessings. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Wa sallillahum wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألم تر إلى الذين أوتوا نصيبا من الكتاب يدعون إلى كتاب الله ليحكم بينهم ثم يتولى فريق منهم وهم معرضون ذلك بأنهم قالوا لن تمسنا النار إلا إلا أياما معدودات وغرهم في دينهم ما كانوا يفترون فكيف إذا جمعناهم ليوم لا ريب فيه ووفيت كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون قل اللهم مالك الملك تؤتي الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك ممن تشاء وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير تولج الليل في النهار وتولج النهار في الليل وتخرج الحي من الميت وتخرج الميت من الحي وترزق من تشاء بغير حساب الله أكبر إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد